Welcome to part two of the Live 2D PNG Tuber rigging tutorial. If you haven't seen part one, I highly recommend going back and watching it. We went over the mouth rigging as well as the eye blinking. Today we're going to be going over hair rigging as well as your physics setup. Just like last time, we will be adding our main model bounce. So to do that, let's select everything in our model. And when it comes to selecting everything in a hierarchy, you have to select the highest object in the hierarchy, which means that when we're selecting everything, we don't need to select things that are inside of a warp deformer. If you do, when you go to make a warp deformer, it will throw you an error where it says, please create an object with the same parent deformer selected. So make sure that you don't have things within warp deformers selected because it only needs the topmost component. Let's make a new warp deformer and hit create. Now we're going to select our main bounce parameter, add three keyforms, and we'll do the same thing that we did last time. Move to the right, to positive one, and we're going to stretch, hold the alt button, left click on the outside bounding box, not on the green, on the red, and drag the entire shape in. And we're also going to stretch ourselves out a little bit. So we'll start from the top and pull the model up. And just for consistency purposes, the model has lifted up from the bottom just a tad. So I'm going to hold shift, select the middle of the warp deformer, hold left click and drag it back down so that it stays at this bottom point. And now we'll do the left side. So move to negative one and this will be our squash. Hold alt, drag out and then pull the model down. And now it's out of bounds. So we're going to hold shift and pull it back up to the edge. If your model stretches outside of the bounds of the box, don't worry about it. It's not going to be a problem. Now we have our main bounce ready to go. Now it's also time to do some hair physics. And this is where that hotkey we made earlier will come in handy. For me, my model is separated into a main right bang, a main left bang, and then my two side bangs. Your hair might be separated further than this. I also have my back hair component as well as my bun. If your hair is straight like my model's hair, then you can go ahead and follow this basic rig. Otherwise, I will be showing how to rig curly hair or other textured hair and black hairstyles in a little bit. If you have straight hair or just want a simple sway movement, we can go ahead and select our first piece of hair. We're going to select the hair physics parameter and add three keyforms. They should show up as boxes because this is a blend shape. And if it's not showing up as boxes and it's showing circles instead, deactivate those keyforms, right click, edit parameter, and make sure that this blend shape box is checked. Move to the right side, and now we're going to be using the hotkey that we made earlier. So press Alt 3, and this will open the temporary deform tool. This tool will allow you to create a temporary path that the mesh will follow as you move it. I'm going to make about six points. So one starting at the top, one near the root of the hair, and then the rest will be following the arc down to follow the general shape of the hair. Since we're on the right side keyform, intuitively I'm going to make this the right movement for the hair. So I'm going to grab some of these points, hold the shift button and drag them over. If you want to see how it looks, you can drag the keyform back over to see the movement in between two points. And if you want more refined movement, you can also use the deform brush tool up here, change the size by holding B and left clicking and dragging, and you can manually move points. And once again, I'm holding shift as I'm doing this because it helps move things in a straight line. If you don't do that, you can move things however you want. But if you hold shift while you do it, it prevents you from moving up and down as you're pulling. So it's good for stability. And this doesn't need to be perfect. So I'm going to hit the check button and now we can see our movement and we'll want to do the same for the left side. So let's drag to the left, press Alt three. Hit A to get back to your cursor and do the same, but with movement to the left. I'm going to adjust the right side a little bit. I don't like the movement as much on the right side. And now we will also be adding the second part of the hair physics, which will be almost exactly the same, but we're going to start it from a slightly lower point, which will give a wavy effect. So with the same piece of hair selected, now select hair physics two, add three keyforms, move to the right and press alt three. Now this time we'll be mostly moving just the bottom. So I will mostly be using the bottom two points. Now 
Now that we have our first hair physics set up for the right bang, I'm going to go ahead and do the same process for the rest of the hair. I'm going to speed this up for viewing purposes, but you can follow along as I do it. And then I also have to do the back hair as well. And for the bottom of the back hair, I am just going to do this really subtle. There we go. So now we can see all of our primary hair movement and all of our secondary hair movement. And lastly, this is optional. This is just a little detail that I'm going to add personally. And this is a movement that a lot of PNG tuber models have where things move slightly up and down as the model bounces. So I'm going to add an extra parameter and I'm going to name this hair bounce from negative one to one with a default of zero and hit OK. And then I'm going to collect all of my hair components by holding control and left clicking. And I'm going to add these into one warp deformer called hair bounce. And I'm going to add three keyforms on the hair bounce parameter. And at the positive one point, I'm just going to shift it up slightly. And at the negative one point, I'm going to shift it down slightly. So there's a subtle hair bounce. This is actually not subtle. I'm going to move it down slightly. Just a little shift in the hair and that's all. Before we move on to the physics, I also wanted to show some samples of black hairstyles and how you might want to differentiate your rigging depending on what you're going for. For the hair bounce, a different option instead of the hair moving up and down could be a secondary bounce similar to the main bounce that we have. So I'm going to select my hair group for my main bounce and on the hair bounce parameter, I'm going to add three keyforms. On the right keyform, I'm going to hold alt, left click and drag in. And then again, hold alt, left click and drag up. So there's a subtle bounce. And then on the left keyform, I'm going to hold alt, drag down. And then once again, hold alt and drag out. So we have an additional slight bounce with the hair. And then in terms of your two hair physics parameters, our first parameter will be a wave movement and our second parameter will be a bounce movement. So with one of my bangs layers selected, I'm going to hit the three keyforms button on hair physics one. The right side, I'm going to grab my brush, hold B and left click and drag to make the brush a bit smaller. And we're going to move all of the hair slightly to the right And on the left keyform, we'll be doing the same except for the left. Then for our second physics perimeter, add three keyforms. And on the right side, we're going to push the curls up. And on the left side, we're going to stretch the curls down. You can also push them in. On the right key form, you can push them out. We can open up the physics menu to see how this looks. 
The movement is more bouncy in comparison to the movement for hair types that are in the 1A to 1C range. So I'm going to do the same for the rest of the hair real quick. And once we're done rigging, we can go to modeling, physics settings, and this is the overall bouncy effect of the hair in comparison to the swaying effect that we saw earlier. I also wanted to show another way that you can do bouncy rigging for something like a 4C hair texture. I'm going to add the same hair bounce deformer, and this will pretty much be the same. You can just squash and stretch it just like we had before. So I'm going to go to the positive one deformer, hold alt, stretch up, hold alt, stretch in and go to the negative one deformer hold alt and pull in and hold alt and pull out so we have a little bit of a bounce just like before then you can select the main hair mesh and for the hair physics one parameter we'll add three keyforms at positive one we're going to focus on the top half of the hair so we're going to bring this top section to the right and then move to the left and move the top section to the left. Now we're going to move to our hair physics 2 parameter, add three keyforms, but this time we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to use the hair 1 physics parameter for reference. So move the hair 1 physics parameter to the right, then make sure you're back on the hair physics 2 parameter and move to positive one as well. This is just so that we can make sure that these kind of work together. So on the hair physics 2 parameter at positive 1, we're also going to bring the bottom half over to the right and try to avoid the top half. And basically what you're doing is you're evening out the movement that you have in the top half so that these kind of match. And then we'll go ahead and do the same for the left side. So move hair physics 1 to the left, click on hair physics 2, move to negative 1, and we're going to bring the bottom half over to match the top. And now I'm just going to move between the two and make sure that the movement is complete looking. It's kind of hard to explain this, but basically the summation of the top and the bottom should make one clean movement together. And so you can see right now what I'm focusing on. This middle section does not move as smoothly as the rest. As you can tell, it's not moving as much as the top and bottom are. So I'm going to blend them. And to do that, I'm going to take my brush tool. I'm going to select the art mesh and I'm going to hold shift and select both physics parameters at the same time. Make sure both are set to negative one. And we're going to move this middle section over just a tad. And what this does is affect both parameters movement at the same time so that the summation of them together moves the middle. Now we're going to do the same on the right side. So move both to positive one, make sure that you're selecting both parameters at the same time, and focus on the middle section. 
Now if we open up our physics settings, we have a very bouncy kind of wavy movement. Now we're ready to add some physics. So let's go to modeling, physics settings, and we're gonna hit add and create a new physics group that we're going to name voice volume bounce. Ignore the input presets here and hit OK. In the input section, we're going to hit add and add our voice volume as our input. Leave it as a position type and set the effectiveness to 100. For the sake of limiting the amount of physics that's going on in this model, we're going to only use one physics group for the entirety of the model. And we will be using that in tandem with multiple pendulums. So to add a pendulum, hit the add button down here under the physics model settings section, and that will add the first pendulum. We're going to add four total and leave the settings as is right now. We can come back and adjust them later. Now move to the output settings tab, right click, and add. And we're going to add multiple output parameters here. We want the main bounce, the subtle hair bounce, and both of the hair physics parameters. Then hit OK. The default settings are very slow and flowy, but you can see that they're already working. We increase voice volume, everything goes for a little bounce. In the output settings menu, you can see that our output is extremely strong. And if we want to decrease the total output, we can hit this decrease output button and it will make sure that the output maximum is at 100%. That way it'll look a little bit less wonky as we quickly move back and forth between points. Also note that by default, each of these output items is following a specific pendulum, meaning that the main bounce is following the first pendulum, the hair bounce is following the second pendulum, and each of these have different movement, as you can see, because the second is reactive to the first, the third is reactive to the second, and so on. I'm going to adjust some settings here, and you can copy them if you want. And that seems like a pretty good point for me. And just make sure that all of your pendulum options here match which pendulum you actually want that output to follow. And then you can hit the X button. Good job, you now have functional hair rigging for your PNG tuber. In the next video, we'll be going over animations and expressions. Links will be in the description for all of the videos in the series. See you in the next one. Bye.